It's the end of the year, so let's count down the top 10 care and husbandry videos of 2020. can't believe the year's almost over and what a year it's been. And I'm not just talking about all the crazy stuff going on in the world, but just here on this channel, things have grown so much. Gained 40,000 subscribers, two and a half million views, launched a podcast and so much more. So thank you all so much for your support and your encouragement and just watching these videos, it's been awesome. So today, since it's the end of the year, we're gonna count down the top 10 care and husbandry videos of this past 12 months. I tabulated all of the views, comments, and likes, and figured out which 10 care and husbandry videos that have come out this year that you all like the most. So we're gonna start right now with number 10. So the number 10 video of the year was on the Vingaroon. The number nine video was how to care for the Texas brown tarantula. The Afonapelma hensi, usually referred to by the common name, the Texas Brown, Oklahoma Brown, or Missouri Tarantula. The eighth video was on the Brazilian Blue Dwarf Beauty. This tarantula is by far one of the most beautiful species in the hobby, but doesn't get shown a lot of love, probably due to the fact that it is a dwarf species and it does not have the impressive size of other tarantulas. I have even overlooked adding this species to some of my own top 10 tarantula lists. Personally, I struggle getting photos and videos of this species because they can be skittish and photosensitive. They do not like the bright lights and will usually dive into hiding anytime I attempt to take photos or record a video. But when I'm just hanging out and relaxing in my tarantula room, they are usually out on display and I'm able to observe and appreciate their beauty as long as I do not disturb their enclosure. The fact that they are so brightly colored and maintain their vibrance for so long is really a major advantage to this species. Unlike the GBB and other brightly colored tarantulas that are very vibrant right after a molt and dull over time, the D. diamonds and Nessus has gorgeous colors right up to their molt with very little fading. This in conjunction with the lack of urticating hairs should really move this tea to the top of everyone's must have list, even if it doesn't grow to an impressively large size. Since it can be skittish and bolt very quickly, it may not be best as your first tarantula. But after you've had a little experience and are used to rehousing and caring for a tarantula, this will be an excellent addition to your collection. Coming in at number seven was the Mexican Red Knee Tarantula. So today I'm gonna break down exactly how I keep mine and share some of my experiences with you. Brachypelma homori, formerly classified as the Brachypelma smithy, but known commonly as the Mexican red knee tarantula, 
is one of, if not the most popular tarantula in the hobby. When most people think of a tarantula, this is the species they picture in their mind. Made famous by being used in movies like Indiana Jones and the William Shatner movie Kingdom of the Spiders, this species was also showcased at the end of the episode Realm of Fear on Star Trek The Next Generation. As a pet of Miles O'Brien, he named Christina and said it was a Lycosa tarantula found on Titus IV. Number six was its cousin, the Mexican flame knee tarantula. The Mexican flame knee tarantula, classified scientifically as the Brachypelma erratum, is one of the most popular and beautiful tarantulas in the hobby. Like many other species of Brachypelma, this New World tarantula is favored due to their ease of care and docile temperament. This is one of my favorite species of Brachypelma, mainly because of the pattern and colors. I love the contrast of red and white stripes on the black body. This is definitely a great species for your collection, no matter your level of experience. This makes a great tarantula for beginners, though they can be very slow growing. So if you get a spindling, it'll be many years before it grows to its full adult size. The number five most popular video is a staple in the hobby, and that is the Chilean rosehair tarantula. The rosehair tarantula, or the Chilean rosehair tarantula, known in the hobby by the scientific names Gremistola rosea and Gremistola portier. You can also find these tarantulas under the common names Chilean fire tarantula, Chilean red-haired tarantula, and rosy. This may be the most common tarantula in the hobby and can usually be found in pet stores around the world. The danger from buying this tea from a pet store, especially large national chains, is that they can be selling wild-caught tarantulas that may be full-grown, but they have no idea what sex the tea is, how old it may be, and wild-caught specimens can have parasites or other health issues that can cause issues further on down the line. So you're always better off buying captive bred specimens, not only to support tarantula dealers and breeders, but also so you're not supporting the large scale trade of wild caught specimens. Number four this year was the Afonapelma Samani. The Afonapelma samani, or Costa Rican zebra, or striped knee tarantula. Females of this species can live for around 20 years and reach maturity in about five to six years. Whereas males live for only about seven years, reaching maturity in two to three years. Females can grow to nearly five or six inches with males being slightly smaller. These tarantulas will have a dark brown coat complemented by bright white or beige colored stripes running along its legs. This stripe pattern is what gives the Asamani its zebra or striped knee common name. This species can be defensive and certainly isn't what I would consider docile, but it would much rather retreat to its burrow than kick hair or give you a threat pose. As spiderlings, they spend the majority of their time burrowed deep into the substrate, only occasionally coming out into the open, usually to feed or have a drink. Coming in at number three, and honestly, this one surprised me. This video has just kind of blown up the past month, and that is the tailless whip scorpion. <laughs> Damon diadema, or the giant tailless whip scorpion, is one of the most unique types of arachnids. This is a beginner-friendly species as they do not possess venom and do not bite humans, though they can pinch you with their pincers if you agitate them a great deal. Other than the minute risk of a pinch, they are harmless to humans, though they can look very intimidating. The front pair of legs have evolved into very long antenna form legs that it uses to feel around its environment, to corral prey, and to sense chemicals and vibrations. 
The resemblance of these antennae-like legs to a whip and their lack of a tail is why they are referred to as tailless whip scorpions, though they aren't a scorpion at all. Though their body only grows a few inches in length, the leg span can be as much as 10 to 15 inches when their front legs are fully extended. The pedipalps of this species have evolved into these evil-looking pincers that they use for self-defense and to hold their prey while eating. Now, number two is no surprise. This is a beautiful tarantula. I was very proud of this video. And that's the one I did on the Monocentrophus balfouri or the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. Monocentropus balfouri, known commonly in the hobby as the Socotra Island Blue Baboon, was described by Pocock in 1897. This is obviously a stunning and unique tarantula and a great addition to any collection for keepers of immediate to higher levels of experience. Though this is a more docile species, I would not recommend it to new keepers as its speed and venom can be a little intimidating. But if you are ready to transition to old world species, this would make a great species to begin with. Keeping them communally may take a little more experience dealing with old world species before taking that on in your collection. The care and husbandry would essentially be the same, but the challenging aspect would be rehousing the communal. Trying to transfer multiple embalfouries from one enclosure to another can be very stressful and difficult and can lead to one or two of them bolting out or even giving a threat pose. So having plenty of experience rehousing old world tarantulas would be ideal before attempting to take on a communal. And the number one care and husbandry video on my channel this year was the video I made on the cobalt blue tarantula. But hopefully we'll get enough footage that this will make an enjoyable video for you all and you might learn something. Seriopagopus levitis formerly known as the Haplopelma levidium, and commonly known as the cobalt blue tarantula, was described by Smith in 1996. This tarantula is an old world fossorial species indigenous to the rainforests of Vietnam, Laos, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Cambodia, and Myanmar, though people rarely find them due to the loss of its natural habitat. At first glance, this tarantula appears to be black, However, upon closer inspection and under the right lighting, the true bright blue color becomes very apparent, making this a unique, one-of-a-kind, gorgeous tea. Like most Asian species of tarantula, the cobalt blue can be a very defensive tea. It is important to note the difference between aggressive and defensive, as aggressive suggests the tarantula will attempt to attack unprovoked. This tarantula is described as defensive because it only reacts to perceived threats to its safety usually giving an impressive threat pose and slapping the ground when you disturb its enclosure. This tarantula has been known to bite when they feel in danger and can quickly escalate from threat pose to attempting to bite, so heed their warnings and back off and give them space when necessary. Despite their bad attitude, this is a gorgeous species with an amazing blue coloration, which is why it's so popular amongst hobbyists. The downside of this species is that even though it's gorgeous, it spends the majority of its time deep in its burrow, usually only allowing you to see the front half of it that it will hang out the front of its burrow. Thank you for watching and thank you so much for an amazing year. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing that so you don't miss any of my future videos. If you wanna catch up on all my past care and husbandry videos, just check out this playlist right here. And if you wanna see more of my top 10 videos, just check out this playlist right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise and I will see you next year. <laughs>